Well, happy February 13th, everybody. It's so good to see you tonight. Oh, my word. And uh, and I know that there are some people coming in to uh, the chat, you know, into our chat room, our video. And I'm grateful that you are coming in. And thank you for coming and spending this time with me tonight. Uh, tonight is the night before Valentine's Day. Are you ready to roll for Valentine's Day? Do you have your gifts? Do you have your cards? Are you ready to roll? Have you made your dinner reservations? Uh, the, the good news is I've pretty much uh, got the dinner thing taken care of. Melissa kind of expects me every year to take her to Wendy's because she loves Wendy's. That's what she loves. That's what she wants. But I'm going to try this year to talk her into going a little bit more upscale for Valentine's Day. I'm going to see, I'm going to stretch it a little bit, push it, see if I can get her to go to Waffle House. What do you think? Is that upscale enough? I don't know. Love to hear your thoughts on that. But anyway, thank you for joining me tonight. We're going to be talking in just a few moments about the question, you know, can I really trust Christianity whenever there's so much hypocrisy among those who profess to be followers of Jesus Christ? All right. That's a good question. I've heard it a lot, and we're going to talk about that in just a few moments. Uh, so let me encourage you to join us. And uh, and let me also encourage you before we jump into this, if you've not liked the page yet, please take a minute and like this page or subscribe to the page. I would really appreciate that. It really helps get the the video out there. And, uh, and so it helps with the algorithms. So more and more people can uh, see the videos and hopefully it'll be a blessing to them. Well, anyway, we are talking on this Tuesday night about the question with so much hypocrisy among the followers of Jesus, can I really trust Christianity? See, the question of trusting Christianity in the face of apparent hypocrisy is really complex and honestly, it's challenging. And it's a challenging question for those of us who are Christians to answer. You see, as Christians, I think we acknowledge the struggle to reconcile the actions of some with the teachings of Jesus. So my aim tonight is really to take a few minutes and provide some insights and, and maybe even some guidance for both believers and skeptics on the understanding on, on understanding and, and navigating uh, this particular question and issue. Um, now, before we delve into the actual specifics, I, I think it's essential for us to recognize that this is just, honestly, it's a tough question to answer. I mean, we don't relish the idea of getting the question. But we understand that as Christians, we grapple with the, the tension between the ideal Christian life and the imperfect reality of human behavior. And the internal conflict can really make it challenging sometimes to articulate a convincing response to those people who have questions about faith because there are so many, quote, hypocrites uh, that they know. I think first it's important as we take a moment and work through this question, I think it's, it's important for us to realize that uh, in Christianity, there are indeed some high moral standards that are placed upon followers of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we fail to live up to these ideal standards. And when we do, it does, it does, it does create a tension between the professed beliefs that we have and our imperfections as humans, all right? Second, second, I think it's also important for us to understand that sometimes this question is difficult to answer because there is a lot of diversity in Christianity. I mean, think about this. There's a lot of different denominations and there's a lot of different interpretations on things that can certainly make it a little bit more difficult uh, to articulate a response as to why some people believe one thing or live one way and other people believe another thing and live a a different way. So sometimes the diversity among Christian denominations and interpretations can sometimes make it a tad bit more complicated. Furthermore, I think Christians grapple with the 
inherent tension between the ideal Christian life and the flawed nature of humanity. The acknowledgement of this struggle, struggle can make it challenging to, to articulate a convincing response. As believers themselves wrestle with the apparent gap between their beliefs and their actions. A additionally, the personal nature of faith makes it challenging to provide a one-size-fits-all response. Christianity involves a, a deeply individual and transformative journey, and Christians may hesitate to oversimplify the complexity of their faith when confronted with skepticism. But finally, the prominence of, of, of media, I think showcasing negative portrayals of Christians may contribute to a skewed perception on things. I mean, instances of hypocrisy, they are there. I'm not denying that. They are there. But sometimes they are sensationalized. And when they are sensationalized, they overshadow the countless positive and genuine expressions of faith that may not receive the same attention. You see, in essence, Christians struggle to answer this question because they grapple with the tension between their beliefs and human imperfections. They grapple with the diversity within faith, the faith community. They, they grapple with the individualized nature of Christianity. And honestly, they struggle and grapple with the media portrayals of, of hypocrisy, you know, and the public perception that comes as a result of those portrayals. And so addressing all these things can sometimes feel overwhelming, you know, especially for believers who want to have an open and honest dialogue about their faith with other people. Now, let's talk about a few things that we might want to point out as we're having a conversation with somebody in regards to the trustworthiness of Christianity in light of the fact that there is so many hypocrites, all right? Well, well, first of all, I think it's, it's important that we take a moment and just remind them or, or highlight for them that condemning hypocrisy is actually in agreement with Jesus. You see, to understand why Christians condemn hypocrisy, one has to turn to the teachings of Jesus Christ, all right? Throughout the Gospels, Jesus consistently denounced hypocrisy, especially among religious leaders. He condemns their hypocrisy, emphasizing that true righteousness stems from a transformed heart. Now, critics of Christian hypocrites find themselves unintentionally aligning with the teachings of Jesus, who himself strongly condemned hypocrisy. Now, in the Gospels, particularly in Matthew chapter 23, verses 13 through 33, Jesus delivers a very scathing rebuke to the Pharisees, exposing their outward displays of piety as a mask for inner corruption. You know, he denounces their hypocritical behavior, emphasizing the importance of genuine righteousness. It's rooted in a transformed heart rather than mere external observances. So when contemporary critics come and voice their concerns about Christian hypocrites, they're echoing the sentiments expressed by Jesus centuries ago. Their condemnation of hypocrisy resonates with the very teachings of Jesus that form the foundations of Christianity. And by holding Christians accountable for inconsistencies between their professed beliefs and their actions, what critics are inadvertently doing is they are aligning themselves with the call that Jesus offered for Christians to live an authentic and sincere faith. So in this shared critique, there exists a, a, a common ground between those crit, critics of Christianity and uh, and the ethical standards of Jesus Christ. They're both calling out hypocrites. Both em emphasize the, 
the significance of true heartfelt devotion over superficial displays of religious observance. And this convergence highlights an unexpected unity in values and principles, underscoring the universal recognition of the harmful nature of hypocrisy within any spiritual community. All right. Now, so I I think it's important to, to remind people that Jesus was critical of hypocrisy. All right. And that his expectation is one that we live an authentic and faithful uh, walk with him. Now, let's let's continue here if we can, uh, because I think it's important for us to talk a little bit about our example. You know, we recognize that there are hypocrisy. There is hypocrisy. We recognize that Jesus um, certainly was critical of hypocrisy. But we also, I think, have to take a moment and recognize that Jesus is our perfect example, that Jesus stands as the unparalleled example for Christians, offering a flawless model for how to live an authentic and consistent Christian life. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, it's affirmed, it says this, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus, having faced the same temptations and challenges as humans, he emerged victorious without succumbing to sin. So by following Jesus's life, By following his teachings, by by following his example, Christians find a blueprint for authenticity that resonates with skeptics. You know, when we follow the teachings of Jesus, the example of Jesus, people are going to notice it. And the authenticity of that is going to resonate with those who look at it, even if they are skeptical. His selfless love, his compassion, his unwavering commitment to righteousness really does provide a framework for navigating the complexities of life with integrity. You see, as Christians strive to emulate Jesus, we seek to live out the principles of forgiveness and live out the principles of humility and and live out the principles of, of sacrificial love. And in doing so, Believers not only align themselves with the core tenets of Christianity, but also present a more compelling and consistent witness to those who are skeptics, demonstrating for them that the transformative power of faith can lead to a life marked by genuine virtue and authenticity. But I think also we need to recognize that hypocrisy is a, is a universal struggle. It just is. And Christians acknowledge that each person, each person, even ourselves, we grapple with this struggle with hypocrisy to some degree or another. The reality is, is that hypocrisy is not confined to any specific group or belief system. It is a universal human struggle. All right. And that is something I think it's important for us to point out, that both Christians and non-Christians grapple with degrees of hypocrisy. And that certainly is acknowledged in Romans chapter 7, verse 15, where it says, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. You know, it used to be, I think in the King James, Paul said, you know, I do the things I don't want to do and the things I don't want to do, I do, you know, and he, and he goes on and talks about that in to some, some great length there, but it really does point out the common struggle that, that we all have. And it's a reminder of our shared humanity, fostering empathy and understanding between people, even of different beliefs. That this is something that everyone who is human wrestles with. Hypocrisy is not limited to just Christians. But every group has their share of hypocrites. And so recognizing the, 
the universal presence of hypocrisy really can impact our lives and it can impact our witness. It, it humbles us. You know, fostering a sense of humility, we acknowledge our, our own imperfections. And, and this humility becomes the foundation for, for a genuine connection, breaking down barriers between individuals and communities. Understanding that everyone is on a journey, that everyone is wrestling with their own inconsistencies allows for, for us to be more compassionate and less judgmental towards one another. Moreover, I think comprehending the degrees of hypocrisy can really inspire and motivate us towards wanting to live a more authentic life. So instead of fostering a judgmental spirit, the awareness of the fact that we all struggle with hypocrisy should encourage us to have a spirit of grace towards other people. But, but I think even to a certain degree, we need to extend some grace to ourselves from time to time. Embracing the reality that growth is a continual process. You know, it just is. That growing in our faith and, and living out the Christian faith is a process that we are growing in. We're not perfect, but we are growing in it. And that should, that understanding that we are growing in it should cause us to, to have some patience and understanding to people who are around us. <laughs> It really does become a catalyst for personal transformation when we realize that we are on a journey, you know, that we are striving to be better, to live a more authentic faith. It should motivate us to align our actions more closely with our beliefs, fostering a life that is marked with consistency on authenticity and, and grace. So in embracing our shared struggle with hypocrisy, we actually find some common ground that transcends, um, you know, certain religious boundaries, fostering a compassion and fostering, hopefully, a, a, a sense of understanding and grace. <laughs> but there's one other thing that I think I'd like to point out, if I could, for just a moment. And that is, as a Christian who is a hypocrite, which everybody is, we also have to understand that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross um, not only forgives sin in general, but even the sin of hypocrisy. I think we forget sometimes. You know, it's, it's almost like uh, people use the, the, the argument that the church has hypocrites as a means of canceling out faith canceling out the person who is imperfect, you know? I, I think it's important that we understand that at the heart of Christianity, there is the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross. That the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is a profound expression of divine love. You know, it's a profound expression of redemption, that encompasses forgiveness for all sins, all sins, all sins. Let me say that one more time, all sins. The word all in the Greek is a, is a small word, pas. And pas means all is what it means, including the complex and pervasive issue of hypocrisy. Notice what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. It says this, and you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Now listen, friends, I understand that skeptics may view hypocrisy as an unforgivable canceling sin. It cancels you out. You should have no voice. You should have no influence. It cancels out what you stand for. I get that. But every group out there has their share of hypocrites in it. So therefore, if you use that as your measuring stick, every group loses its voice. I get it. 
Skeptics may view hypocrisy as unforgivable and a canceling sin, but the central message of Christianity is greater than that. It's one of grace. It is one of redemption. The sacrifice of Jesus is an act that not only atones for individual transgressions, but it also provides a pathway to liberation from the pervasive nature of hypocrisy. Jesus' sacrifice goes beyond merely forgiving. It, it seeks to transform individuals, okay? So it goes beyond just saying, okay, you are forgiven. Its goal is to transform individuals, breaking the chains of hypocrisy and guiding believers towards a life marked by authenticity and consistency. He wants to change your life from the inside out. See, understanding that the cross addresses even the sin of hypocrisy should encourage skeptics to reconsider their perception of forgiveness within the Christian faith. You see, it underscores the profound and the encompassing nature of God's grace, emphasizing that no sin, and I mean no sin, including hypocrisy, is beyond the reach of divine forgiveness through the sacrificial work of Jesus on the cross. You see, friends, in navigating the, the question of trust amidst hypocrisy, Christian hypocrisy, it is crucial, you know, to ground our understanding in the teachings of Jesus Christ, who did condemn hypocrisy unequivocally. Christians acknowledge the tension between the, the ideal and the reality of human behavior. <laughs> we understand that Jesus is our perfect example. You know, we understand that, that there is a struggle within our, our ranks to live and follow after Jesus based on his teachings, but also wrestle with the humanity that we have to, to deal with. But ultimately, we understand that the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross provides hope, offering forgiveness and freedom from the shortcomings that, that might tarnish anybody's witness. You see, by embracing humility and acknowledging imperfections and relying on the transformative power of Christ, both believers and skeptics can find a path towards greater understanding of, of the redeeming work that Jesus wants to do in a person's life. Now, these are just a few thoughts on, on maybe some things you could talk about as you're talking to someone who wants to uh, point out the fact that there is hypocrisy within the church. Yes, there is. But you know, if they feel that way, they've got something in common with Jesus because Jesus felt the same way. You know, friends, I realize that I realize that sometimes these questions can seem very condemning and they can seem they can create a lot of anxiety for us. But I'm also here to tell you that these questions can also, provide conversations that help us to build bridges to other people so that they might at some point uh, feel the promptings of the Holy Spirit in their life and also embrace the saving truth of Jesus Christ. That's my hope. That's my prayer. And I hope just the, some of the things that we've talked about here might encourage you and and might be something that, that you put in in the back of your mind, whenever you find yourself in a conversation with somebody who wants to point out the fact that there's hypocrites in Christianity. You know, uh, friends, thank you so much for joining me tonight. It's been great to spend this evening with you. And uh, and listen, um, love to hear from you. Don't hesitate to, to drop me an email, will at, at greatbridgebaptist.org. Please feel free to shoot me an email. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, but also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And uh, But anyway, I hope you have a great week. Hope you have a great Valentine's Day. And men, don't forget tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., we meet right here in the venue uh, to talk about the book of Matthew. And tomorrow we're going to be looking at chapters 15 and 16. So let me encourage you to come out and be a part of that. Anyway, God bless you. Have a great rest of your evening. And thank you for taking a few minutes to join me tonight as we talk about questions that sometimes we don't always want to have asked. God bless you. Take care.